Hey, 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 if you're watching me, you're watching Julie. That's right, I'm Julie with the Julie Show that goes nowhere and is only for therapy. Actually, it has been helping others around the world, so I gather, or I'd like to tell myself. <laughs> Okay, I've been giving you some fairly ill advice about your dentures. Being though I'm a newbie, you all taking that advice from me all the time isn't probably the best bet. I just give you ideas, hints, and nudges, and things that have worked for me. And I'm also going to come to you today with things that don't work for me. Now, since I've been using the powder, I've been noticing this, like, gritty feeling right up behind my front teeth, right where the curve starts, okay? And that's got to be right in inside where the curve goes down. So, um... This morning, I was looking into this situation, and I thought to myself, now how could it be the powders doing that? Because I leave so much water in that denture on the top, and I put the powder in, it literally starts to turn to goo right before my eyes. I took my nails off. I want to realize the sharpest object that has ever been next to these dentures have been my nails. I bragged about how my nails get all the goo off at night when I take them out. <laughs> If you have nails and you've attempted to do this, stop now before you pluck out parts of your dentures. Now, I didn't pluck out parts of my dentures where it's so uncomfortable I can't wear them. I noticed, though, right where all that gets stuck, there you see it, behind the front teeth. Every day, I have a huge amount of gook on there, and I don't even put that much gook in there. I put a little tiny dot and spread it right behind the front teeth. And then since this has been happening a couple days now, I noticed I've been putting a little bit on the hoof and spreading it and then putting a little in the back on the on the top where there's like a, a, a nice flat spot so the air will get in. And for the most part, sometime in the afternoon, throughout the day, I start to feel gritty through here, through here. And what I mean by that is it's kind of in the inside. Y'all, y'all, it's from plucking those things. It's from plucking with my nails. I have been plucking out adhesive from that area for months. I've been bragging about how my nails have come into hand, come into come into handy, come in handy with this. There's got to be a better way. So I've been using the other end of my brush, getting it all nasty and pink, but you want to know something? I'm not going to do any more damage to my dentures. So please, if I told you to pluck with your fingernails to get the adhesive out, find a better way. I mean, you're not supposed to use sharp objects for reasons. I kept plucking thinking, it's my natural body. It's my natural body. It can't hurt. My nails are going to do some damage to somebody's eyes if something ever happened to me. How are these nails going to damage somebody's eyes if they can't even damage my dentures? And again, they can damage my dentures. So isn't that a weird train of thought? So I was thinking about this today. This is what kind of got me thinking about this. Do I put my nails on? Do I do my nails myself? Do I go put my nails on? Because I've always said I've had the sharpest nails. They're sharp when they're natural anyways, but they're just weaker but I was wondering if I should go get my nails done because it's always been my highest point of defense was to use my nails. And they've been very effective in the past and they'll be very effective going into the future if need to. That's when I started realizing, I'm like, wait a minute. All these little spots in my, I'm like, I'm going to go check my denture real quick and see if maybe the nail, uh-huh. I wanted to come on and show you guys earlier, but you guys would have never been able to see inside the denture what I'm talking about. So it's right at the huff, like I call it the huff, like, you know when you have the big arch, but right behind the front teeth where it starts to come in, okay, when it goes down, I put a little tiny bit of a, uh, um, behind there, behind the front teeth in the front, and then right behind that in the hump, and then right in the, on the lid in the back there, there's a flat spot. So in three different places, I've spread out a little bit of fixing and precision. My mouth feels good today. Ever since I've been putting that fixed in precision over the, the part where it's kind of nicked from my nail, it's helping. It's not the powder. I thought it was the powder. Oh, that gritty powder. I can feel. How does powder hurt you? Since when has powder hurt anything? <laughs> Except for that crap that went on with the baby powder. I guess it, that uh, poisoning you get talc powder or whatever. I don't know. I don't watch the damn news, you guys. I don't watch any TV. I think it's killing the brain so i am really 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 questioning what the hell i'm gonna do with my hair because i'm not really sure what color it's growing in but it's growing it's i'm gonna i'm just gonna be honest i don't care how much black i actually black how much dark brown i actually cut off if i put red in my hair if i do do that this whole section that's light will turn bright red i can't do that I've already decided that I don't think it's possible for me to do that unless I get my hair, like, bleached. I'm not bleaching my hair, ever. 
No, 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 no. I even was a blonde twice and did. Well, I bleached my hair once. I went to a salon. I was in a pageant. My dad paid for it. I was a blonde and I did it myself and I kept highlighting my roots. And every time I did that, it turned golder and golder and golder. And this is before everyone knew about purple shampoo. I'm not, obviously, I'm a brunette. I went white. Uh, when I was 15, um, I did it. And then again, that was my sophomore year of high school into the summer. I went blonde. And then. Um, I did it again my senior year and it was like straw and I will never ever do that again to my hair. I did start the process of going gray um, back in 2000, I want to say 16. Uh-uh, no, not for me. My my face is way too pale to have like gray hair right now. It's, it is. I bet if I had a nice tan, and like, a, like a salon tan where I went every couple like couple times a week which is never going to happen because i have lupus and the, those uv rays go right through my skin and cause a rash so needless to say the natural sun is my best friend in the summer i use sunblock and then i put on a self tanner and then i put on another gradual tan by jergens you know the one gradual tan it also firms and tones but i also use a firming lotion from new skin and i also use new skin's tanner and that's by far the best tanner you're ever going to find on the market $25 this bottle lasts me I bought two bottles of it last summer and I still have a full bottle let me show you what it looks like so I want y'all to really 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 think about this if you want to be tan it's called new skin sun right insta glow it has a natural tint it doesn't smell it has a light smell but it doesn't smell bad it does not turn you orange it doesn't streak i put it on my face every other day today i skipped every other day i put it on and then in the summer i will do my full body and then when i start getting tan from the natural sun i'll just continue to wear sunblock and jergens and then save the expensive stuff for when i need it makes sense makes sense to me anyways what else y'all want to know about dentures what else you want to know about denture adventures for life um i could keep on going of course we're gonna keep doing this and of course i want to bring in stuff like my tanning and my hair god a lot of you girls had mentioned something about my hair there is a story behind this bouncy hair it's called scalp care being almost 45 years old, I should have learned this a long time ago, which I did. I've been through so many different hair facades and so many different things with my hair. The thing is, I knew the cardinal rule that tint doesn't color tint. You can't lighten a dark, dark brown. The darkest shade of brown before you get to black with a, with a red. Obviously, you've seen what that happened. And I, I did it anyways. Because I wanted to see if my natural hair would start growing out this color. Then I would go in and get it trimmed, probably within the next two weeks before Mother's Day. And... Cut off a little bit more than I normally would to get rid of some of this darker color. But I don't know what color it's coming in. Some minutes it looks like it's coming in darker. Some minutes it looks like it's coming in lighter. I don't know. But if it continues to do this, dark brown it is. I'm not, I'm not going through this yet. I'm not ready. I was like, I was debating on maybe not getting, never. I was debating on maybe not getting my hair cut short again and just letting it grow from this point. But I thought about it. I'm like, man, then I'm going to be stuck with all this dark color. Well, if I'm going to continue to dye my hair dark, it doesn't matter. Because what's nice is, once you do have a set, a good set um, color for your hair, really, I mean, if you dye your hair every two to three months with a semi-permanent, you just have to go in three times and do your roots. You can do your roots up to three times. I've, had to, I've been able to do my roots up to three times before I needed a full dye. So that's, that's six months. Or seven, eight months of just doing roots and then doing a full head of hair once a year. Get what I'm saying? So almost quarterly, you would do your hair and the, the roots. So four times a year, you do your roots. And once a year, you would do your whole head. And with this short of a hairstyle, the, the, the unhealthiness of the dryness of the dye, it's getting cut off faster than it can split ends. Okay? It, it's going quickly. But the story is, the reason I cut off my hair in the first place, I wore some beautiful hair. From the time I started tinting it with the gray, and then I stopped doing that in 2016, and I started to just let it grow off from another short haircut I had in 2014 that was botched. I did never, ever get trimmed. Um, my hair grew beautifully from 2016, 2017, 2018. My son graduated 2019. Look at this picture of my hair. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, here's the picture. See that? Behind that hand of hair right there, behind that one strand, are over 200 
bobby pins holding up my hair. Over 200. There's me with my hair. There's me again with my hair. I also had different teeth. Hair was looking pretty red back then, and I think that I'm a natural redhead, but now that I've done this dark thing, either I have to cut off all the dark and just let this naturally grow in until I'm ready to dye it, or I gotta go dark again. But I'm just thinking, take advantage, Julie. I keep telling myself, take advantage of this short hair to grow out that brown if you truly are a redhead. I need some advice from you people. What do I do? I know it's not that big of a deal because my hair is only like six inches long. <laughs> I tell people that all the time. My sister's like, don't dye your hair red. Don't do it. It won't dye it. It didn't. She was right. It didn't dye it red in the back. It dyed it red on the top. But the funny thing is, is my roots are coming in the same color. And all that matches my shirt. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And as you can tell in that picture um, from my son's graduation, I matched my dress. It was a mahogany. Girl do it. My girl did it mahogany. There's that one. That's my son. Graduation day. See how red my hair was? Okay, so this was May of 2019. 2019, right there on the shirt. Okay, red hair. The lady that does my hair, her son and her were at that graduation for my son. We're friends with them. And uh, I was fixing my son's sash, and I caught somebody take a picture of her fixing my hair, which was really nice. She's into hair. So a couple of months after my son graduated, I decide I want to go in and I want to go a little darker. I want to do away with the reds. It seems like I have to constantly keep coming in for root jobs. That's why I know my hair is not coming in dead red. It's coming in a little bit gray and red, which is making it really light. So she went ahead and the day I came for a color match was the day before I had my hair dyed. My hair was down to, to my belly button. Okay. I'm not kidding you. If not further. Beautiful. I had, oh my God, hold this on me. Two ponytails. In my hair, holding up my bun this size. Two of them. I went in there and I said, look, Sarah, look at how much freaking hair I have. Oh, my God. I'm like, I'm dying here. Look at all this hair. She's like, oh, I could thin it. I'm like, I don't want it thin. But I'm like, I just wanted to show her. I'm like, I don't know what happened. But I went dark. Yes, I was overprocessed that day. I never thought anything of it. I was put on some muscle, not muscle relaxers. I was put on some um, blood pressure medicine. And I thought that was making my hair fall. It was a combination of stress, the medicine, and being over, over um, processed. By the time of, I want to say, August 2020, two, not even, not even a year. I would say one year exactly after I dyed my hair dark, I had lost half of it. Half of it. I went from wearing 200 bobby pins down to wearing 50. I shit you not. And it just got worse from there. I went in. I had her cut four inches off. Hoping that I could like re regrow it back. Then I started vaping. And it was falling out in mass quantities. My teeth were falling out. You guys vaping is no good for you. I know I'm floating in the conversation. But that's the story of my hair. So my hair literally did go from having a huge. Two largest rubber bands you can find in store. For the very thick hair. Wrapping up my hair in a bun. A huge ass bun on top of my head. To a finger tip style bun by a year later this is all i could get for my bun i it was so long and i kept wrapping and wrapping it but it just kept going up and up instead of wrapping around because it was so thin and fried so i lost my hair so she cut my hair and cut four inches off that wasn't enough for me and I, well that was i want to say end of summer 2020 in October, I went in and had it chopped off. I just wasn't satisfied. It's easier for me to do my hair this way. I can go to chop shops, get it trimmed. I don't have to pay for the precision cuts. I can dye my hair myself because it's only one box and it's only like this much hair. I'm thinking about going ahead and having her not cut layers in the back. So I could, this is why I was thinking about maybe cut, just letting my hair grow from here because it's starting to feel like this back is getting pretty long. And the last thing I want to do is go get that all layered up again because when I do grow my hair out, I want it all in length because if you don't have it all in length and you're growing it out, sometimes it can look really bad. But sometimes if you don't have it tapered, it can look really bad. So what I was going to ever do when I get my hair cut next, I'm going to tell her just to trim as usual, half inch to three quarters of an inch, but not to touch the layer in the back to just bring it up on length and then blend it in. We'll see how much she cuts off. If I'm going to tell her what I'm doing when I go in. I'm going to tell her that I'm trying to get rid of some of this darker hair without, you know, processing it and just 
lightening it up by cutting it off and using vitamin C. Well, that vitamin C was making my hair really dry. I know you guys gave me a lot of compliments on my hair the other day about it being bouncy. Those are from the products I use, and I'll show you what they are because I mentioned Launch. Launch is a pretty good, um, they got a pretty good program. My little light. I love these little lights. So let me show you what I'm using here so you guys can know. I'm, I'm going to get a light on. And then this will be the last of my video. I'm only doing this because you guys inquired about hair. So as far as shampoo and conditioning goes, I only shampoo and condition my hair in the shower about once a week, okay, in the shower. And I use Dove. I love Dove. I love the smell. Before I ever do anything um, with heat, with I use this. Is their glass hair thermal blowout primer. That's so I can blow dry my hair without it getting too frizzy. This is Rival Heat Shield from Launch. This works really well. Um, it's probably one of the best. It's it's a little bottle, but it's worth it. I get them all when they're nine dollars. And then this is the thermal mask for heat and humidity because I live in Kansas City and it gets pretty humid here. So I bought that. Um, here's for my roots. You guys always think that I'm like fully colored. This right here dries out your hair though, and it gets on your hands if you don't let it dry and you put your fingers through it. I also want to show you a few more things. I have. This from Lange, this is our Sorbet Botanical Smoothing Balm. I put that in the ends of my hair. Oh, this is magical. I was I had this a year before I even opened it, and I thought, what was I waiting for? I put in a leave-in conditioner, just an Aussie leave-in conditioner when my hair is wet and has been washed. I also, oh, there's more, guys. Where's my little oil? Uh oh there. I use a mixture of tea tree oil and, um... Almond oil, yeah, sweet almond oil, a tea tree oil mix for a hair scalp, one little drop squirt in the palm of my hands, and then I spread it on my fingertips and just put it on my root. I'm going to start using this Hair Revive Elixir by Sunstone, Earth Harbor Sunstone. Um, I got it in one of my boxes last year, and I haven't used it yet because I just ran out of scalp treatment, so I'm going to do that. I also use... This, very rarely do I use a, a nursing gloss or a nectar or serum in my hair because it's really gritty on your hands. You know, it like leaves them kind of slimy. But these are the products I'm using every day. Um, And then this one here, be very careful. As you can see from these clear bottles, they look a lot alike. I sprayed this Miracle in my hair and I thought it was Rival. This is a shine spray and it is very, very potent lightweight conditioning shine spray you only need to do like one or two sprays over your whole head and you'll have bouncy hair i think this right here if there's anything that you would ever want to get and you want your hair to be bouncy and pretty depending on where you live this but this miracle and the miracle or how are miracle miracle i don't know how you say it miracle whatever so i'm gonna say it and then rival or if you're not going to use all the expensive launch products, they're not that expensive. Their $9 sale goes on a lot. Um, there's other stuff out there that you can use. I'm not dead, dead set on just using that. Um, I've also used um, John Frieda Frizz Ease. It's the secret weapon one. It costs about $10 in drugstores. It's a must-have. Oops, sorry, I dropped it. Didn't mean to be so loud. This is a must-have because this takes away all your flyaways. You can put it in your hair when it's wet. And you can also apply it with your fingertips to different strands that are driving you nuts. And I dropped it again. Guess I'm not doing too well today. I dropped everything. What else do I use? Okay. I forgot one of my favorites. Posh by Lange. This is a pomade hair polish. They, you use such a little amount. This is going to last forever. This I used a lot when I first got it. But now that I have the Mystique spray and the sorbet that I'm using... It was the sorbet, and I actually bought another sorbet, and I didn't even realize it came in the big bottle. <laughs> came in the big bottle. So, anyways, those are my hair things. That's what I do. I got my H two O bottle made and ready to go. Put H two O sign on it. That's ready to go for summertime. Oh, and I wanted to show you all this too. I've been using this. I don't know where my. I don't know where my sunblock went. I've been using this in the summer. Uh, it's a whipped instant bronzer. Again, 
30 SPF to 50 SPF is what I use. I probably will not start using this right away. I will probably wait till I get a base tan. So what I'll do after May starts, after Mother's Day, I'll probably start going out in my swimsuit laying out in my yard. And at first I'll wear a sunblock and the, 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 the fake tanning cream, the actual new skin tanning cream. And then I'll start to go in and use Jergens before I go out in the sun. And then I'll spray that on. But at first I'll use regular sunblock. I don't know where it went. I thought I had another bottle. I guess I don't. Anyways, my nightmare. <laughs> this is all I have for bathroom storage, guys. I moved into this house. And this bathroom here is so small. It has a little sink in the toilet. It's brown, too. And then all of our stuff. Of course, all of our stuff. Look. Mine. 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 Theirs. Mine, 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 mine. Ooh, Dalton's mom's cotton, all the shampoos and lotions, all the things, my friends, all the things. And not to mention, not to mention, I'm waiting on a Fab Fit Fun box. Hold your breath, guys. Just hold your breath. That is my winter box. From Fat Fit Fun, and that is my fall box last year from Fat Fit Fun. Both of those boxes up there, and these Fat Fit Fun boxes are not small, are filled. They are filled to the rim with soaps, hand soaps, body sprays, wipes, facial wipes, vaginal wipes, um, just any spare, anything for this closet that I just showed you is in there. So, yeah, now that I give you a walk down my you know, daily routine with my hair and what I do. Maybe, maybe, maybe your hair will be bouncy. I have to think, I have to say, one of the bounciest things you can do for your hair, if your hair is naturally straight like mine, put a, um, the Laduo is good, or put a little, when you're straightening your hair, put a little curve in it. So when you're coming down with your straightener, curl it in so it does that. It'll give it a little extra balance. Also, if you're use, using the Laduo to straighten your hair, it gives it much more volume. Or you can buy a lounge brush, the blow dryer brush. I'm not that patient. I'm not into that. So I have never tried it. But a lot of the girls say it's great. All right, guys, if you gave you tips on dentures, please don't scratch them with your nails. If that's what you've been doing, just use the brush. Brushes are $2. You know what I'm saying? Dentures are two grand. Uh, I was I was wrong to give you guys that advice. I didn't realize at the time that that's what I was going to do. But, again, I'll update you more on my hair uh, and what happens. I'm sure I'll do a couple more videos before Mother's Day. I don't know. Today is April 21st. Um, that gives me a week and a half to get my hair dyed and cut. So we'll see without a vehicle. And I got to get the vehicle in the shop. Fun stuff, guys. Fun stuff. I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't, you have any comments, please write below. I don't care if it's critical, crit criticism. I don't care if it's a compliment. I don't care if you have a question. Right here. I'm trying to give you guys all the answers that you need. Um, I just feel good. Again, don't pick at them with your nails. I didn't realize those are sharp objects to try to just brush it out. And I want you all to go in peace and have a good day, okay? The weather here is beautiful. It's 75 degrees, and I hope it's nice where you're at, too. Bye-bye.